Coming up this Sunday is the WWE's last pay-per-view before WrestleMania 31. WWE Fastlane. What a name. What a name. And I guess the best way I can sum up my thoughts heading into this show is into three separate categories. It's no fucks given, some fucks given, and many fucks given. It's a big fucks giving, if you will. So let me tell you what I'm looking at and what level of fucks I give about the different things on this show coming up this Sunday. Live on the WWE Network for free! Unless you're an idiot like me that already subscribed to the network, then it still is costing you $9.99. Let's start off with the no fucks given category. I'll kick it off with the Divas title match. Nikki Bella versus Paige. I've checked, I've looked all over, not a fuck to be given by me, and nor should there be any fucks given by you. They've taken Paige and taken her from being some type of anti-diva to making her just like every fucking buddy else. Good job, WWE. A tag title match that surely many of you are going to get a raging heart on about. The Usos defending their straps against Cesaro and Kid. Oh, boy. Eh. Not a fuck given. Which is really sad, because I'm a Cesaro fan. You know that's bad. When you've got the Usos, who I like, and Cesaro, who I really like, and I don't give a fuck about the match. I know many of you will look forward to this match and talk about this match being one of the highlights of the show, surely. But at the end of the day, what the hell does it accomplish? And what fuck should really be given about it? The WWE doesn't care. Why should you? And even when it comes to the six-man tag, why should I care? Rollins, Big Show, Kane versus Rowan... Uh, Ryback and Ziggler. There's storyline purposes for this, and, you know, at least it's some type of spotlighted match for a Dolph Ziggler and a Ryback and a Rowan. But again, it involves freaking Big Show and Kane. Big Show and Kane. And what I'm still left wondering is, is this going to be the point in time that Randy Orton makes his triumphant return back to the WWE? And if that's the case... What are you sitting there and doing this for? Because it just would seem to me to leave Dolph Ziggler completely out in the cold and might very well do the same with both Ryback and Eric Rowan. How could you go through that whole storyline? Oh, I know exactly what it was. The WWE didn't give a fuck about these guys because it was all about John Cena. So if they don't give a fuck, I don't give a fuck. And let's talk about the things that I at least give somewhat of a fuck about. I'll go to the IC title match between Ambrose and Wade Barrett. Of course, the WWE has done just a tremendous bang-up job with Bad News Barrett, trying to change up his character now, making it BNZ and all oh, fuck. And then, of course, they booked him so well as the champion. Uh, the one thing I like about this is it feels like they've at least tried to give us a little bit of story here between Ambrose and Barrett. And I hope that carries over to Sunday in the fact that I don't want this to be an actual match. Have this be some type of brawl, have this be some type of fight, and push that shit off to WrestleMania. That's what I give some fucks about. I want to see the WWE do the right thing here, which is not have a actual match between the two of these guys at Fastlane. Play out that story. Let it marinate and simmer. Let the fans wait a little longer. It worked with Rollins and Ambrose. Why couldn't it work at least to some degree here? You know, I have to say, even though I wanted Stardust versus Goldust or Cody Rhodes versus Goldust or whatever the fuck to wait until WrestleMania 31, and I hope that's still what we get is these two facing off at WrestleMania 31, I at least give some fucks about Stardust versus Goldust. I have to be honest. Because if I don't get it at WrestleMania, then this is my one chance for this match. And I want to see these two guys go out there and tear the freaking house down, because they very well could. It says all types of storytelling elements just abound all over the place on it. Could really be a nice spotlight match for Cody Rhodes, and I'm looking forward to that at least somewhat. And then I also have to confess, I do give some fucks about Triple H and Sting and their confrontation on Fastlane. Of course, the reason I give a fucks about this in any way, or even some fucks about it, is because it'll be Sting appearing on a WWE pay-per-view. This is all about Sting. And I also know that this segment is somehow going to be really, really good. I just get that feeling. However, with that said, this is also going to be basically a raw segment on a pay-per-view. 
I don't like that crap. I wish WWE would cut out that crap, and I have the feeling more and more they're going to continue to do it over time going by as they transition to being a WWE Network-based product. And this also will not force me to give any fucks at all really about the feud between Triple H and Sting, and most certainly still won't give me to give any fucks about Triple H versus Sting at WrestleMania 31. Now I'll have to confess, there are two matches that I give many, many fucks about on this show Sunday. Two matches that I'm really glued to. Two matches that I am eagerly anticipating. Two matches that I'm very anxious to see how things will play out. First and foremost, the U.S. title match between John Cena and Rusev. Think about this. John Cena is wrestling for a mid-card title on a pay-per-view. Just think about that for a second. John Cena is wrestling for the U.S. title at Fastlane. You ever want to elevate the meaning and profile of one of your mid-card titles? Have seen a feud for it, if not win it, and that's going to get the job done. As it most certainly has here, even though in a lot of ways the beef and feud between Cena and Rusev hasn't really revolved that much around the U.S. title. It has, to be fair, been a bit of a prop, and an ancillary prop at that. Not something that is a featured spotlight of this feud. But that's okay, because it's an elevation by association for that title. But John Cena versus Rusev. This is a feud that can make some money. This is a feud that can accomplish a lot of things. And this is a feud that really presents the WWE, and in particular John Cena, an opportunity to both do something different with his character and at the same time elevate a new, fresh face. The WWE and John Cena must understand what has to occur here on Sunday. There can be no wishy-washy finish. There can be no John Cena reigning supreme. This must be about Rusev, and Rusev must dominate, and Rusev must win this match. Not by hook or by crook, but by straight up legit. If you want to play kind of this old man Cena role, which you've started to do, and I haven't fully understood why the WWE's went down this path, then you really need to sell it and you really need to go there and you need to have Cena lose here. And if anything else, you really want to launch an interesting storyline for Cena heading into WrestleMania, you have him tap out to Rusev, the guy that never gives up, gives up at Fastlane. That's how you tell a compelling story. That is how you can get people more behind John Cena, and that's exactly why this company probably won't fucking do it. It'll be some bullshit wishy-washy finish. Rusev will either win via interference from Lana or some type of distraction, or he'll win via countout, or he'll lose via countout. It'll be the same old typical bullshit. I give many fucks because this is a golden opportunity for the WWE to accomplish a lot of things and really set the table up incredibly nicely for something big at WrestleMania, and I don't want to see them screw the pooch here. If you are going to do a wishy-washy finish, the only way you can do it, in my opinion, is by having John Cena get disqualified because Rusev got inside of his freaking head, or maybe John Cena gets counted out because he's not sure that he wants Rusev at this moment in time. We'll see what happens, but the match that I give the fucks the most about, the match that I would think even with Cena fighting Rusev is going to be the main event of this show because it has to be because it's been positioned and packaged that way, is Roman Reigns versus Daniel Bryan. At stake is a shot at Brock Lesnar in the title at WrestleMania 31. Now, I'm not a fan of this crap. And the reason I'm not a fan of this crap is because I think it's stupid that the Rumble winner has to put his shot at the title on the line because he didn't earn it. He maybe doesn't deserve it. He fucking won the Rumble. I don't care what anybody says. You win the Rumble, you earn the shot at WrestleMania. That's a whole premise of the fucking pay-per-view. And to the people that sit there and say, well, they did the shit before with, like, Randy Orton Mysterio in 2006. Yeah, they did. It was fucking stupid then, and it's stupid now. If it's going to work, then there has to be some type of real storyline purpose here. There has to be some real reason as to why this happened. Like when you look back at 99 and when they did it with Austin and McMahon. They go 1-2, they go the entire Rumble, McMahon freaking wins the Rumble. There were so many different elements that played in a story that had been carrying on for over a fucking year that it finally culminated in their cage match at St. Valentine's Massacre in February of 99. 
That is an entirely different scenario. This in no way, shape, or form measures up in any way. You've got Roman Reigns who has no reason to have to put this shot on the line, putting this shot on the line, going against Daniel Bryan, who legitimately has a gripe about not getting a title shot. So instead of getting that direct title shot that he's merited based off of being a previous champion that didn't get a rematch, he has to fight for that opportunity at WrestleMania because his company is fucking stupid and the storytelling inconsistencies are about. If anything, this should be the pay-per-view where Daniel Bryan faces off against Brock Lesnar and maybe Roman Reigns goes against Seth Rollins or he teams up with Team Ziggler or some fucking thing like that. Or you could have done Roman Reigns versus Roots have a lot of different things other than what you're doing here. I give a lot of fucks about this because I want to see what the WWE is going to do. And I want to see where the WWE is going to go because they put themselves in this position where they have to make sure that they deliver, and they deliver right, and they deliver big. Having Sheamus come in and interfere with Daniel Bryan is a cowardly way out. Having some type of screwy, wishy-washy finish where both of these guys advance to WrestleMania is the chicken shit way out. The only thing they can do at this point, in my opinion, is have Roman Reigns go over Daniel Bryan, and by God, that's what they need to do, and I'm curious to see if they have the balls to do it, and if so, how they're going to execute. And the funny thing of all is, though, is that now the WWE has got me interested in Roman Reigns versus Daniel Bryan to where, to me, it's been a big backfire because now if Roman Reigns wins, I don't want to see him face Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. If Daniel Bryan wins, I most certainly don't want to see him wrestle Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. You've got a, a wrong attraction, no attraction, special attraction champion that's hardly ever fucking there that I don't care to see and don't want to see, and I don't want to wrestle either one of these two guys at WrestleMania. And I don't want to see either one of these guys wrestle him at WrestleMania. I want to see the issue advance and continue between Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan. Way to go, WWE. You made me give many fucks about the thing that I shouldn't be giving nearly the amount of fucks about that I do. When I look at what's going to happen Sunday at Fastlane, I envision this kind of encapsulating what the WWE is now. And more so what I envision is this being an indication of what we're going to get come WrestleMania 31. I expect Fastlane to disappoint. I really do. I expect Fastlane to be a lot more disappointment than what many people expect. I expect Fastlane to leave a sour taste in many fans' mouths, wanting and wishing and hoping for so much more than what they actually get. And that's what I think we're going to get at WrestleMania 31. We've gotten a... Horrible Royal Rumble match, maybe the worst in our history, leading into a pay-per-view that is probably going to be largely forgettable, building up to a WrestleMania 31 that at the end of the day, I think we're going to look at as saying it had the potential to be so much more, but in a lot of ways, it's just forgettable. It's probably what Fastlane is going to be on Sunday, a forgettable show building up to what will amount to be a forgettable WrestleMania.